Okay guys, this video is going to describe how to use our various tools to follow the new schedule and content guidelines for the Libertarian Party Facebook page. Uh, the first thing I'm going to go over is how we can use the social media invite only team. This team is composed of our best designers, uh, those that have, that have either been in design for liberty or in the social media uh, marketing team have shown that they can create quality material and work together and all that kind of stuff. And this is basically where they they're, you know, hang out and, and make great material for the Libertarian Party. Um, in, in order to use this team, the, the, the first area you need to look at is the photo section. This way you'll be able to see kind of a lot of stuff that's been made recently and kind of click through some of the stuff and, and see something that, that, that can be useful. I'm going to just go ahead and do an example of and just walk through all the steps of creating a post. Um, this post was made by Chuck Coker, one of our great designers, and this basically sort of is a is a new take on something that was put out by the Israeli Air Force um, and uh, again they're talking about some of their achievements which although they're notable are heavily funded by US taxpayers and one of the things that we wanted to do with this meme is to draw attention to that fact so I'm gonna go through the steps of this we're gonna first save this image um, you can see from my comment that this looks great and it's and there's no comment that say we need to work on this more or something like that so this is a finished image so I'm going to save this image. I'll go ahead and save it as just IDF or something like that. And then let's go over to the actual Libertarian Party page, and all you guys with content scheduler, uh, content creator access should be able to do this. All right, and this is going to go over how, like, all the steps that we need to do. The first thing is. Um, we're going to put photo video, we're going to upload the photo or video. Notice that we're uploading it here so we can actually use a scheduler. Go ahead and click on this icon, add year 2013, uh, add month uh, as May, and date we'll use, say, uh, tomorrow's date, May 8th, and we can schedule this post for 10 a.m., which is the appropriate time to schedule a post from, one or one of the appropriate times to schedule a post. Um, and again, it's just this one, IDF. Now, here's where we, where, where content scheduling is, is not just sort of mechanical. We don't want to make this, I mean, obviously this is a heavily potentially touchy subject. We don't want the post to come across as anti-Semitic or something like that. We want to show that we're talking about that there is too much government subsidy of our, of our, of our allies. So we might write something like the uh, Libertarian Party... Uh, believes in eliminating all foreign military aid to our wealthy allies, including all of our NATO allies, Israel, Saudi Arabia, Um, you know, etc. And then, uh, you know, later on, we'll, we'll you know, let, let, let's say that this was, let's say this post had already been posted, and let's say it was just scheduled like this. Apparently. Alright, so we can schedule that. Now I'm going to view the activity log and show kind of what the next phase of this process would be. And this is the advantage of using image posts. Now, some of the other posts that we see over here are really good posts, but the thing is, there's the only way I could edit this post or, or, any, of the, or any of the article posts, even when they're really good posts, is I actually have to delete the post like this, which I'm not going to do right now. I could delete the post and then re-upload the post. With an image post, it's really easy to edit it. I can just go ahead and click on it, and right over here I can edit it anytime. I can edit it before it's posted, after it's posted, and obviously this is a key advantage to have, especially when we're putting something that's potentially controversial. We might want to change this text, you know, on the fly. So again, image posts are pretty much almost always the way to go. There is maybe one or two exceptions, though I can't imagine what they would be. Now, at this point, this is what the article team might do. Um, Cato had an article about subsidizing our, subsidizing our wealthy allies. So, or we might just look up a, an article for, um, uh, for 
uh, are for Israel's Air Force being heavily subsidized. Some might say like you know Cato subsidizing uh, security of wealthy allies. All right, so if you are on the video team, you might want to click this to get this video over here. And you could add that over here. You could say something like, watch, watch, and then put this over here. Or you could write, learn more about ending subsidies of our wealthy allies. Now, suppose you're on the article team. Well, obviously, something like this, potentially controversial, could probably use a good article. So I'm going to go ahead and find one, and you know this might be changed, you know, later on today or tomorrow or something. Uh, United States subsidies. So if you're on the article team, you could post something like "Read more," and post uh, this is an article about. Uh, additional 30 billion in US military aid to Israel that kind of backs up the post. Again, a post like this obviously needs to be backed up. Okay, so now if you guys have been paying attention, you realize that in nowhere in this post do I really talk about any of the benefits. So let's say you're one of the editors, you look over here and there, there's no real benefits. This just kind of states our viewpoint. Um, so let's adjust this a little bit. Maybe we could say something like by eliminating our un our excessive military subsidies to our wealthy allies we can promote peace save money and or maybe something like you know save billions in tax money that can be used uh, for voluntary and private purposes, or that can be changed later. And encourage uh, res uh, responsibility and independence, or something like that. I mean, the exact phrasing doesn't matter, and for now, I'll just say so just just write that, and undoubtedly change this later on today. Okay, so now, and just if you're one of the editors, just, just go ahead and delete something like that. Because again, we're not talking about likes and dislikes. We need to get people rally, rallied behind an action. The action here is eliminating our excessive military subsidies. The benefit is having more tax, uh, having people able to keep more of their money, to have less war and loss of life, etc., etc. So we can say that we're done editing on that one. So that's the, that's the one basic way that you can use the invite-only team. But that only scratches the surface, and this is why it's important for everybody, especially in the core strategy team, to really get to know, you know the discussions in there and sort of and really keep your finger on the pulse of what's going on, on, on in there. Right now, the invite-only team is the absolute heart and soul of our social media outreach. Um, earlier today, one of our candidates uh, was posting the, on the Facebook page, uh, uh, Chris Sullivan, Christopher Sullivan, and he made a what I thought was a pretty good post. I just tweaked it a little bit, and so now we have this new post. Um, and you know, I've gotten the and observe of, of of course gotten his approval. We, like although we can encourage candidates to say something, you don't want to say that they said something that they didn't say. I mean that's just common sense. So let's go to the invite only group again, and. I might say like this, and remember, if you're on the candidate team, everything you're doing that involves a candidate saying something about cutting government and the benefits thereof, whether he said it on, on his own or you know he edited something or he wrote it on an article or he put it in a video, it doesn't matter how, how it's there, but if, he, if it's something he said about the benefits of cutting government, that takes priority over absolutely everything else we're ever doing, no matter what that other, other thing is. So I'm going to go ahead and write, hi. Priority item. I can say, can someone make a 
a meme with this text and I go ahead and I put and I say this is a Christopher Sullivan now remember our, our designers these I mean a lot of the, a lot of our designers are people who are, whose time is very 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 in demand so we want to try to be as respectful of that as we possibly can. So instead of saying designers go find your pictures, I'm going to suggest this picture. Uh, I mean, it's a potentially very good picture. It's a picture of of him in his military uniform holding his baby daughter standing in front of a marine chopper. I mean, it's, it's politically, it's you know, it's, it's almost like a very classic type of political type image. Um, and again, at the same time, I want to make sure that I've given full links and access because maybe the designers will take a look at it and they say Arvin doesn't know what the hell he's talking about he's not a designer this picture is the worst picture ever and I might say here's his Facebook page and then of course I'm gonna write down that he is he's um Tarion for house oh I'm sorry for V A Virginia House of Delegates, 55th District. Now, sometimes a candidate will say something that's almost perfect, but it doesn't have, it doesn't have a, a meme. In it. Sorry, it doesn't have any actual benefits discussed. It doesn't even talk about a specific cut, but it's just almost there. Maybe just suggest some alternative wording. I mean, that that's perfectly fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and post this. Now, to make sure, and this is again why it's important to familiarize yourself with, with, the, with the way that the group works, to, famili to, to make sure that it actually gets seen, what I'm going to do now is I'll tag some of our designers. To, to, to tag somebody, you just use the at symbol. Oops, I kind of lost the mouse there. Um, tag a few different people. And these are people who historically have been some of our top designers. And you know, later on in a different comment, you know, if if doesn't get you know, get done over here. Now remember, the, a big part of the culture of, of the invite only group and of all of our design groups is we give a lot of uh, checks and balances. Suppose I come with an idea that I think is fantastic but it's a stupid idea. The point is, because everybody here is a volunteer, there's no real way to, to uh, and you know, already one of the top designers has liked it and kind of letting, letting me know that he thinks it is, it is, it is, it is, it is at least a good idea. Um, and he's already said that he's on it. That's fantastic. Um, what, what this, what this allows us to do, because everything's voluntary, it, it's kind of a check and balance. If I come up with an idea that I think is great and all the designers think it's stupid, it's not going to go out there. It's, kind of, it's a nice check and balance, and it really reflects the deep-seated belief that, that things can be done voluntarily rather than through a, just a top-down, heavy-handed way. Okay, what I'm going to do now is go over the major different types of posts that are part of the new strategy. Uh, the first post is the 7 a.m. post. That is a very important post because every social media person in the world that's using something like Buffer or, or Hootsuite, or, I mean, most of them schedule their, their earliest posts for around at the earliest nine, usually 10 or 11, because they want to balance out East and West Coast and all that kind of stuff. So we want to get the jump on them. We want to set the mood of the day at 7 a.m. Eastern time for the Liberty Movement. And that's what this post is going to do. So right now, at this particular phase of our, stra or of our strategy, this might and this almost definitely will change in our next phase. Right now, we want to set that phase to be a, a, a mood and an attitude of open revolt against the government. So the two places we're gonna, that are going to do that is, is the Tenth Amendment Center and any of the organizations that, that deal with jury nullification. So I'll just show you how you would do such a post. Uh, we go to the Tenth Amendment Center, their Facebook page, and we're going to just find something that's about nullifying the federal bill, and that's what we have right here, unanimous vote Colorado bill. Let's let the world know about the great work that's happening throughout the liberty movement, in this case, what's happening from the Tenth Amendment Center. So, first we're going to go ahead and save the image. I'm going to call it, you know, Colorado or something. I 
Actually, I'm just let me save the big image. So we're gonna save the image again. Yeah, and yes, I do. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna copy the entire text from the Tenth Amendment Center. Now we're going to go over here to the Libertarian Party page. And we'll post this. Now, Tenth Amendment Center, as we, as we remember, is supposed to be a 7 a.m. post, and it's an image post, so we go to photo video. Um, remember, we want to do as pretty much everything as an image post, because that lets us do those last-minute edits, which are super, super useful. I mean, there are sometimes, for unexpected reasons, something happens in the news, or, or just for whatever reason, we need to sometimes change the text. So we go ahead and post, not, not usually from, from Tenth Amendment Center, because it's, it's from another organization. Um, and I'm going to say over here, we want to thank the group that actually did this, and I'm not trying to steal credit, it's credit or anything like that, to the Freedom Fighters at the, notice how I tag, uh, using the at sign, I scroll down to 10th Amendment Center for sharing this, or, I mean, any, anything along those lines is basically fine. Now we want to schedule that. I'm going to schedule it for a couple days from now. Uh, say May, we can do 8th, and again, 7 a.m., not 7 p.m., and I and, and again, we want to set the mood of the day with this. We schedule this, and as always, we verify this in the activity log. Why? Because somebody else might be working on this at exactly the same time, and might have scheduled something else for the exact same time. In this case, I'm lucky, you know, that, that didn't happen. Um, now, let's say that there's some part of this text we need to change. We can change the text in a second. Now, if you just do a status post or an article post, you can't change the text. An image post, we can always change the text. So, that's the first post of the day. Um, the, we've talked about the post from the invite-only social media marketing team. Um, for a state party post, the, that one is, is, is relatively... We're going to kind of combine that. Okay, so now the question is, how do we take... How do we find viral memes that are about the benefits of cutting government? Here's the thing. The image doesn't have to be about that. You can just make it about that in the comment section. So we can upload a photo and video, as always, or as, as often as humanly possible. Um, and I have this nice quote from Milton Friedman. This is a good image. And it's about government make works. So I'm going to say, like, by eliminating the vast majority of federal jobs, we can increase private sector employment or even better, I can say uh, we can return money to those who earned it and allow them to support the businesses and charities they choose to. I can write learn more about getting, or I can just say, uh, let me, that's too long winded. I can say get involved with the LP at dot Facebook dot com slash libertarians slash info. I go to the scheduling icon, I had a year, this should be a 3 p.m. post, we'll post it at 3 p.m. And we'll even post it. May 7th, 3 p.m. We'll schedule that. Go ahead and view the activity log to make sure that it is uh, posted. 
and we can see that it's posted. Uh, this is actually the wrong. Um, the, the the image should be should, should be something to uh, different. Something to delete this post. The uh, the idea though is you can in the actual text talk about the benefits of cutting government. It doesn't have to be something brilliant. You don't need to have five million numbers. I mean, if you do, that's great. But if you don't, just if it's about the drug war, say by ending the drug war, we can save a lot of money and build personal responsibility. If it's about cutting military spending, just say by cutting military spending, um, we can reduce loss of life and, and save money and, and stop making enemies all over the world. The point is, it doesn't have to be profound. Just emphasize or just, just say like, by doing X, we can get this. It's, you need to sell the benefits on every single post. Um, I mean, most of the rest, of the, the same thing applies. If it's, it's a post from a state party, the same thing. In the comments, make sure that you somehow tie what they're saying to a, to a cut in government. Now, for the state parties, because, you know, we all work together, I mean, most of the state parties are moving the same direction, or, or many of the state parties are moving the same direction anyway, so it's not that big a deal. But those of you guys who are doing memes, either from the open design team, the invite-only design team, like Design for Liberty, or just from wherever, in the message, in the description, put something about the benefit benefits of cutting government right at the beginning so that we can remind people that that's what we're here to do. We're not here just to build a party just as something to do with our free time. We're here to cut government, promote freedom. Note about benefits. They don't have to be financial. They can be any benefit. If we get rid of obscenity laws, we increase creativity and allow people to actually, you know, put out great ideas. If we get rid of the FCC and, and you know, like artists can actually put out quality music and not have to gut the actual content. Again, those are not financial benefits necessarily, but they are benefits. It just has to be anything that's beneficial. Here's why it's important for us to talk about benefits. You can complain about something as much as you want, but that doesn't mean that somebody should change their behavior. For example, it's really, really, really annoying that all humans have to die. And we can complain about mortality forever, but what are you going to do about it? The, the thing is, if you, if you just say, for example, Pepsi is really, really bad, that doesn't necessarily mean that Coke is really, really good. It just means that Pepsi is really, really bad, but it still might be the best of the available options. So by just, for example, just saying like all the problems with the drug war, we aren't really convincing anybody to end it. We're just saying that it's really bad. We need to show them that our alternative is really good. If we're selling a product we have to sh and our product is freedom, we need to explain why freedom is good. To us as libertarians, yeah, it's obvious because we think abstractly and we can easily picture alternate realities and all that kind of stuff, but that is not most people. So the first thing, we have to address that fear, which is the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. Every, I mean, 99% of people think that, and our job is to show them that this quote, devil they don't know, isn't it, that they don't know, is not even a devil. It's an angel. It's the greatest thing ever. The second issue is that people have fear of the unknown. It's kind of the same thing. But you need to paint a picture for them that says, what is this other world like? What is America like without a drug war? Most people think it's just a place where everybody just goes and shoots everybody else. We need to show them that it's not that. It's a place where you get to keep more of your money where people learn to build personal responsibility. We're in an entirely new culture of allowing people to take care of themselves or allow voluntary organizations that are actually grassroots and effective to take care of people to, to, to thrive. And that's what we're, sell what, what we're selling over here. When selling benefits, they don't have to be financial. They can be completely intangible. For example, if we stopped and got rid of the FCC, we might have higher quality uh, shows. We might have, for example, HBO type shows on regular networks. On the on the radio, we might have uh, a station that are able to put like the real versions of songs or whatever. Oh, we might have other stations that that in response to their to their to the, the customers' desires have much more censorship. I mean, the, the the idea is is not the specifics of the argument. The point is. They don't have to be financial, but they do have to be just some kind of benefits. A very common mistake, there's two common mistakes that people make, and I want to make sure that we're not making either of them. The first is negotiating against ourselves. If you go to a car dealership and the person says, this car is $30,000, it would be insane to say, I'm never going to spend more than a penny over $50,000. So much of what goes on in the liberty movement is just that. We talk about these extremely status dystopias that we don't want, and that's not even on the table. Why are we talking about that? Let's talk about what we do want. Let's get the stuff that we want, a smaller government, like more freedom. Let's talk about that, talk about cutting the existing thing, not negotiating against these other things that are off in the distance. I mean, that, that accomplishes absolutely nothing when our goal is to cut laws that are already here right now. 
The second and more common error is actually asking for more government. So many of us grew up in environments where, where the idea of politics is just passing more laws that we think we need to pass more laws. We don't. We need to just repeal existing laws. We need to cut more agencies. We need to get people, have more of their money back and make them freer. We don't need to pass another, an additional law that says Congress has to do this or that. We need to get rid of the laws that already are there. The only maybe possible exception would be a balanced budget amendment, but we don't need to make that amendment. We just need to cut all the spending we're doing and then cut the taxes by equal amount. The, uh, the, the, there's two really big mistakes that people make, and I want to make sure we try to not make those. First, I want to give a little bit about my background. I, when I'm not doing this, I work in education. Uh, I have perfect GRE scores, perfect GMAT scores. I finished the GMAT an hour and 25 minutes early, I finished the GRE an hour and 45 minutes early, and I've developed my own method of speed reading that I use for both of those tests. Despite that, most of the libertarian solutions that I see that are presented, I can understand maybe half of them with about an hour of concentrated work per solution. Nobody has time or interest in these highly convoluted solutions. Um, say what you want to say and mean it and just make it simple. For example, end the income tax. Simple. Reduce the income tax by 5%. That's also simple. I mean, I don't think there's any point in that second one, but end the income tax. End the drug war. Uh, don't be disingenuous, by the way. Stuff like ending med medical marijuana, everybody in the world knows what that means. We know we, that everyone knows that's just about legalizing marijuana. When you say and, and me legalize medical marijuana, it just makes us look like liars. It makes us look like people are trying to like pull a fast one over everybody. Tell the truth. And people might not like the truth, but they'll respect it in the long run. Look at the respect that Ron Paul has garnered from both the left and the right. A big part of that is honesty. So let's keep our posts honest. Let's make sure that we're saying what we're talking about and not try some indirect slippery slope, slope manipulation type of stuff. That's not what this is about. Um, understand there's an important difference between public communication and private communication. In private communication, if you're trying to convince your wife or your, your, or your husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, brother, sister, or parents, they kind of have to listen to you. So you can, you can use a much softer approach. You might just, if you want to convert somebody, maybe invite them to watch an episode or two of Firefly and get them a different perspective or, or, or whatever. Public discourse, first you have to be heard. Most of the time the media ignores us. However, if we put something that really threatens the status quo out there, we get that viral on Facebook and Twitter. We get that seen by, I mean, we've had posts that have been seen by well over a million people. We get that something like that seen by a million people. We get that trending, then they have to respond to it. And once they've responded to it, even if they say, those libertarians are crazy, they've, they've now basically invited us to a debate. We can say, no, we're not crazy. Here's some more facts. Give the detailed facts at, during the debate. And, and the, at debating, we're great. At that initial motion of getting the debate started, we're not as great. And so that's what this, this phase is about. It's about discussing the benefits of these things to make them to make them viral, to make people want to do them, to force the other sides into a debate. Remember, if we try to cut an existing agency, the worst thing that happens, nothing changes. If we try to prevent the growth of an existing agency, the best thing that can happen is nothing changes. What we want to do is to focus on big bold and comprehensible, this is important, comprehensible cuts that people can get behind. Remember, if you want to get the villagers riled up, you don't say like, hey, let's get riled up and dislike that monster. No, we say let's get riled up and kill the monster. Everything here should be a call to action. The action should be ending an agency, repealing a law, and promote and or, or legalizing something. Um, in, in closing, let me just remind everybody about the following thing. A lot of times people say, man, this is too big, it's too bold, it'll never happen. The Department of Homeland Security was created in like a month. I mean, that, it appeared and it was fully staffed in like a month. I mean, we can, if it can be created in a month, we can get rid of it in a week. Uh, the Patriot Act was packed, passed very quickly. We can get rid of it just as quickly. The bailout, that was hugely unpopular, it still passed, and we can get rid of all corporate welfare in the same amount of time. We got a boost of $2 trillion in corporate welfare during the bailout. Let's have a cut of $2 trillion in corporate welfare during this next cycle. So, big, bold, comprehensible, and don't be a wuss about this. Don't, 
don't hide behind things like, you know, medical marijuana or whatever. Say what we're trying to do. We're not trying to legalize medical marijuana. When you say that, we look like liars. We're trying to end the drug war. So, thanks for watching this video. If you guys have more questions or, or when we put out our next strategy after in, in our next phase of our strategy, I'll put out something different and, and hopefully that will clarify, you know, any of the questions or concerns.